So even though I'm just a teenager, I'm not as invested in my fashion choices. And with the current pandemic, there's little left to be desired for the upper half of my wardrobe over Zoom. But coming from a young person's perspective, there are some things I and many of you probably consider when choosing what product to buy, either in fashion or really anything else for that matter. Those things being cost, quality, comfort, brand recognition, and maybe even what's trending right now. And so that brings me to this phenomenon of fast fashion. Maybe you've heard it because of its increasing presence in the public conscience and as a crisis in the fashion industry, as well as for environmental action. And so it's this phenomenon of mass production that coincides with trends such as in celebrity culture or in the fashion industry, and that causes mass amounts of waste to be produced. And so while this can be a little hard to visualize for some people, let's say you see Kim Kardashian, maybe from paparazzi photos, wearing a certain pair of jeans or a certain pair of boots one day. And then the next day you see it on 10 different fashion sites at half the cost and probably at half the quality as well. So this coinciding with trends in celebrity culture is how many people quickly buy into this model of buying a product quickly, wearing it for maybe a few days or a few occasions, and maybe it can sit in your closet, but then when you discard it, it'll go and sit in landfills for up to 200 years, according to the World Resources Institute. And this isn't even mentioning the amount of greenhouse gases that are produced from buying just one cotton shirt or one pair of jeans. And so a number of solutions have been proposed to combat this problem, those mainly being the tenets of ethical or conscious consumerism. And maybe you've heard about it and maybe you felt frustrated because it is a frustrating concept, concept that people and individuals like us, maybe even teenagers, are expected to invest their money in options that are more sustainable or supposedly more ethical, more brands like that, and away from brands that engage in practices of fast fashion. And while the concept is well-intentioned and the activism behind that as well is well-intentioned, there are some glaring flaws we do need to consider with those type of plans, those being access and people not having the time or financial means to go look for those more sustainable or ethical options. And lots of us don't even take the time to consider what companies are actually being sustainable or ethical. In reality, maybe we see some periphery groups on the periphery thinking about those things and we internalize it, but we don't really know how to take action on it, even though a part of us does probably care. And so this conflict of self-expression and wanting to realize our own ideas especially among the growing generations and among teenagers is a conflict that we've had to deal with for quite some time but the real potential of teenagers to invoke change in this issue they see is already can be seen and that's through thrifting which has been trending in recent decades as a means to be more sustainable but also engage in those practices of individuality because at the end of the day creating some your own ensemble out of thrifted pieces and buying secondhand is a way you can show self-expression and away from more of that brand image and fast fashion because also, with the resale market being digitized, with sites like Depop, where small businesses can create and sell at their own rate, and consumers like teenagers find that to be more authentic and sustainable, it can be easy to see how the fashion industry is being disrupted by the resale market and how people are more and more turning to those kind of options. And while this still does focus on the individual consumer, it is a step in the right direction and in including others in this movement for more accountability. And so when we look at 
moving away from individual consumer habits and towards mass movements because at the end of the day, teenagers do comprise a large portion of fashion marketing. And when we go on websites and we see ads targeted towards us um, regarding fashion or any other products, we do see that a lot of it is targeted towards us and towards our consumer base. So why shouldn't we counter that with mass movement? And so it doesn't start with a few public young figures like Malala or Greta Thunberg. It actually starts with the efforts of numerous labor rights organizations and lots of people on the ground fighting to make corporations more accountable in terms of whether that be paying workers more and and holding them more accountable in terms of environmental sustainability. And so while this can seem like an impossible feat, we've seen in the past with movements like Pay Up and also in the present now that has pressured at least 20 prominent large organizations to pay their workers in full and on time. And lots of these ideals of that Pay Up movement were spread through petitions on social media, through the internet, as well as just organizing in person as well, because when we reach out to people who don't think the same way we do or who haven't bothered to think about that at all because that is valid and we don't hear about these things a lot, we also create this environment that rallies together and creates pressure on large corporations. Because a lot of us do make up that consumer base, it is important for them to meet our demands because it can negatively affect their brand reputation and lots of them are starting to realize that as well. Another instance we can see, not necessarily with consumerism, but we can see the global climate strikes of September 2019 in lots of cities across the world, Melbourne, Stockholm, Lahore, that have pressured the large political powers at the UN World Summit to take their environmental demands into account. Because at the end of the day, while corporations and large political powers and political inaction can be some of the causes for issues and in jeopardizing our future in environmental or social justice. It is us who we turn to to put the pressure on individual consumerisms to meet those demands for accountability. And while this is again well-intentioned, individual consumer habits are a way we can work towards the, our goals in solving these issues, we do need to also take into account that institutions do play a much larger role in issues of environmental sustainability and whatever else it is you're fighting for. So in terms of consumerism, the blame shouldn't be put on us and we should be finding solutions that are more inclusive and do take more people whose voices are being dismissed into account. There's actually a scene from a show called The Good Place and they talk about how buying a tomato can be the cause of unethical practices elsewhere in the world that you have no idea about and that we supposedly have to feel guilty for. Just buying a simple product is supposedly supposed to make us feel like we have some responsibility to go and seek out other options that aren't putting our values at compromising positions. And so this kind of train of thought is really exhausting and lots of us just don't have the time to think about that. And so mass movements like the pay up movement or those global climate strikes are ways you can pressure those corporations to not put your own values at risk and to actually take consumer demands into account because at the end of the day it's making movements like that more accessible for the majority that actually have a meaningful impact outside of performative activism or simply raising awareness through your own individual habits.